Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm gonna provide you guys with a bit of an update on the situation for Arctic sea ice at present. This is not going to be comparable to my weekly comprehensive air review, but I would like to point out a couple of factors that are presently ongoing that might influence and melt season totals. So on Friday, we, we talked about impacts to a region of thinning sea ice in the East Siberian Sea. And I'd just like to call your attention to this sea ice concentration monitor from Uni Bremen, which shows that sea ice concentration in the East Siberian Sea has greatly thinned as warm winds have tended to come off of Siberia and invade the region, as well as a number of storms running through the area, which have dispersed the sea ice and tend to thin it in this zone. I think that over the coming days, we will tend to see continued melt in this zone, and that this zone is, is one of the major zones that may contribute to melt as we approach the end of melt season over the next four weeks or so. It's also worth noting that sea ice thinning above the 80 degree, has extended above the 80 degree north latitude line in this monitor in a number of locations, mainly on the Beaufort side, north of Greenland, which, which is a bit disturbing because we see the ice continuing to lift away here, and near the Laptev Sea, which is a very warm region this year with sea surface temperatures in the lap to have much warmer than normal and warm winds continuing to, to batter the ice north of the lap to have sea. But the region in the East Siberian Sea, I think will particularly be notable. And, and it's likely that we'll see some sections in the Beaufort Sea also take a bit of a beating over the coming days. I'd like to talk about some of the factors with regards to that, but first I just wanna show you the satellite imagery of course, we see a lot of cloud cover, but I'm gonna zoom in so you can see some of the thin ice in the East Siberian Sea region. Notably, very, very thin ice here with this spackling texture, which is typically indicative of a very weak sea ice state that is vulnerable to warm oceans or, or any kind of, of weather that, that disturbs the waters and moves the ice considerably. I also like to drill down into the uh, Beaufort sea region here and so show you some of the dispersed ice beneath cloud cover which is extending well to the north and into the 80 degree north latitude line range. Over recent days we've seen um, a lot of warm air running in through Alaska, in through the Chukchi Sea and coming up through through eastern Siberia here. And this real-time satellite imagery cap captured by Zach Lee also shows the, the water vapor that is, is streaming into the near Arctic region here in conjunction with a couple of storms. We have some high amplitude jet stream waves presently running in through the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, and into the Canadian archipelago region as well as in through the Bering Sea and the Bering Strait zone, which is helping to uh, pump warmer air into the region. And I'd just like to note over the coming days, above normal temperatures are expected to persist over this region of the Arctic, with the, Ar with the Arctic as a whole above average according to GFS model forecast. Note the warmth flaring in through the Pacific Northwest and Alaska and the Bering Sea region here in the one day GFS model forecast, and also note how heating tends to re-intensify through the Kara Sea zone in, the, in, in Western Siberia, and, and also as this tends to shift east into the Laptev Sea through the middle range of the forecast, and then again into East Siberia in the later portion of the forecast. So, so waves of, of warmer than normal temperatures expected to move through vulnerable regions of the Arctic, something that we need to keep an eye on as it relates to end season 
totals for CI. So let's see how much time we have left. We've only used about five minutes. So I'd like to just show you one more image and statistic that has been provided by Zach Labe. And we are starting to get close to end season. And, and Zach Labe has helpfully provided us with a number of end season sea ice minima since the early 2000s and running in through the present day with the record low in 2012 here as an outlier and the present trajectory for 2018, which appears to be tracking along the 2010 to 2017 mean range of recent years. It's possible that we might see a little bit of a dip below this, this present trend if we see rapid ice loss in the East Siberian Sea and the Beaufort Sea, but present trajectory appears to be on the average range for the present decade. It's worth noting that the present decade is much, much reduced from, from previous decades, with the gray representing the 1980s, the green representing the 1990s, and the blue representing the 2000s. So just an update on sea ice, given some new information, I will be providing a more comprehensive update at the end of the week. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.